Good morning, good morning, everyone. Welcome to KW Malaysia's Winning Mondays. Uh, we are in the midst of starting a new series for Winning Mondays, but today is like a gap uh, episode. This, this episode today is like a gap episode. Um, it's an episode where we want to just pause for a moment and take a look at what has happened in 2022 first half. Now, congratulations, everyone. We have passed first half of 2022. All of us are still alive. We are still well. Um, one, one thing as I start this morning, I want to ask everyone this one question, right? What is that one word that you want to describe? What has, what have you experienced or happened in 2022, the first half of 2022? So in the chat box, please put in, while we are waiting for people to sign in, put in one word that describes how you feel about the first half of 2022 from January to June 31st, 31st, right? January 1st to June 31st of 2022. How did you feel about 2022? Please put in the chat box. Nicholas is his fast. Okay, progress. What else? Transformation, exciting. What else? What else? What's happening, guys? What is that one word that will help you describe how you feel about your experience in the first half of 2022? Surprising, charged. What else? What else? Growth, awesome, good word. What else? Very challenging, awesome. Thank you for sharing, what else? Now, maybe this, this other question will help. Um, how many of you are experiencing growth in your business in the first half of 2022? Please put in a, if you're experiencing growth in your business, please press one. Right, one, one person, thank you. How many of you are experiencing? If you're not experiencing, please press two. One person growing, awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. We've got people that is actually growing their business in 2022, the first half. So my goal today, uh, and I have my guest here, Nicholas. Everyone, please welcome Nicholas to the call, to the conversation today. Nicholas, can you, someone please pin, pin Nicholas next to me? There you go, Nicholas. Good morning, Nicholas. Thank you yes, for good joining morning. us. Good morning. Nicholas is our Chief Technology Officer from uh, Caleb, Caleb News, uh, Malaysia. So Nicholas, how, how do you feel about the first half of 2022? The first half of 2022 is very fast for me, like uh, lightning speed. It's like without me knowing it's been come, come to six months over here right now. Yeah. Right, everything moved very fast. Why do you think it's moving very fast for you? I think it's moving very fast because we're progressing like uh, too fast uh, on the things that we wanted to do. It's too many things we want to do, like we have so much of, uh, so, so few time that we wanted to do. And we have right. achieved success over success in the things that we actually implemented. So very exciting for this year. The second half of the year is going to be very exciting. Awesome, awesome. So today our goal for Nick and I is to number one, the two goals here. Number one is to bring you a perspective of what has happened in 2022 and what we think that will happen in 2022 beyond 2022. Because I think it's important for all, for all of us to have something called perspective. Because perspective tells us how should we think and what action should we do. Right, so perspective is important. So I'm going to give a snapshot of what has happened very quickly in 2022 first half, and what I think will happen in 2022 second half that will lead to 2023. Because I think the next 18 months, uh, it's very important because they're all tied in together. So I'm going to start the conversation this morning, and Nicholas, feel free to chime in anytime you want to chime in. Uh. Sure, sure, uh, sure. Okay, I'm going to start my conversation this morning. I'm going to share some slides. Can you all see my slides? Yes, we do. Right. So, right. Let me just get my stuff up properly. So it's my slides and then my chat box is ready. Awesome. I can see everyone's chat now. Good. So in this is what is happening. Let's look at the economy of 2022. Now, this is the Malaysian GDP growth rate. You all can see um, from, if you can see my mouth cursor, right, from January onwards in 2022 to June, right, or somewhere in April or May, you can see that we are growing, the, the economy is growing after a very challenging um, 2020 and 2021, we are growing a little bit. Now, the factor that has pushed on this growth is because all of us receive an ang pao from our government. Actually, it's not an ang pao. It's actually, they just allow us to take money from our pocket, own pocket in a place called EPF. Um, and there was 10,000 ringgit withdraw maximum from everyone. I won't ask this question who withdraw it, but I'm saying that there, there was billions of ringgit withdraw and billions were spent in the market for the past um, two to three to six months, right? The past few months, um, especially right after Chinese New Year, there was a lot of spending going on 
Um, in fact, if I spoke to my friends in the retail market, um, those who are in retail business, F&B business, it was one of the best season for sales, all time sales is because everybody was busy spending money because we had a two years of lockdown where we didn't have time to go and spend a lot of money. Never buy Baju Raya, right? So this time we go and buy Baju Raya, buy all kinds of stuff and spend so much money that stimulated the economy to where it is right now. So there lot, there's a lot of feel good factor in the economy before June is because all of us were having a lot of people with a lot of cash. There was billions of dollars in the market that's being spent there. The challenge that we are seeing right now is how can this continue? Because it was stimulated basically by government's policy and also a little bit of the money that came out from EPF, which is quite a significant sum. Right. John, can you help us to understand what this GDP actually is and how right. is it relevant to us? Like just for all of us who actually don't understand what is this, right. we've already been hearing all these things, but what does it actually mean to us? Right. right. Gross domestic products means the entire country's business that is going on. Every business from every sector, right? From plantation to technology to um, construction, every sector. So we put it all together. This is the growth rate in the economy, meaning there's a growth compared to a quarter behind it. So if you look at um, December of 2021 or the last quarter of 2021, there's a negative 2.7 growth, right? And in the first quarter of 2022, there's a 4.6% growth. So what it means is, that the country's economy is growing now. Don't forget that it was very bad before, right? It was negative all the way before every for the past few quarters, but now we are coming back a little bit uh, as the market is open because previously the market was closed. So GDP is a very important um, leading indicator that tells how the progress of our economy, right? So that that's 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 the uh, understanding of uh, GDP. Now Great, the, the goal the goal is not to have negative GDP. When you are in two consecutive quarter of negative GDP, you are what we call entering into what we call a technical recession. So a recession uh, from a policy standpoint, it, it means that two quarters of consecutive negative growth in GDP. When you're in two consecutive negative growth in GDP, uh, you are in the recession. Now, what you see here on the negative growth there is because of COVID. So don't really count because the economy was shut down, even though it was not supposed to be like that, right? Because of COVID. But now we don't know, are we entering the, into a recession or not? Which I will come back to that um, later on, right? So the GDP growth uh, looks quite, feels quite good in the first two quarters of this year. But I think somewhere in June, July, we are going to face certain challenges and I'll go through why challenges that we are looking at right now. So the next thing is, okay, this is our um, GDP per capita, meaning the in 2021, we don't have statistics for 2022 yet because um, we have to let 2022 complete. In 2021, what it means by GDP per capita is the average Malaysian citizen's annual income state, sits at around 11,000 uh, US dollars, meaning the average Malaysian right now is earning around 44,000 ringgit a month. That's what it means, right? Now, in order for us to be a high income nation, we need to go above 15,000 to 20,000 US dollars a year for you to, to, for us to be determined as a high income nation. We are not high income nation yet right now. So what we are saying, what, what, what it's saying is that um, there was a bit of a challenge in 2020 when the income of the whole country went down due to COVID. And 2021, it went up a little bit as the market began to normalize and open up. So the average income of Malaysians right now sits around uh, 4,000 ringgit. So you take 11,000 multiplied by 4.5 right now, which is the US dollars, you will get about 4,000 ringgit per person. So that's the average income uh, in the country, right? It's important for us to see that. And we have been flat on this for quite some time. Um, now, income is important because incomes help us understand the people, the majority of the public uh, in the country, because this is then the, the power of spending of the consumers in our country, right? So I give you an example. In, in, if you go to Singapore, it's about 40,000 US dollars a year, four times more income. I went to Singapore recently with some, a group of us, and I went to the mineral, the 7 Eleven, I bought mineral water, it's three to four sing dollar, one bottle of mineral water. I was a bit concerned because. I calculated enough money to go home or not because after after drink water, 
Then how I know enough, not enough money to drink water, and I was a bit afraid. No? So Nicholas was with me in the trip there, you know? so we all like afraid. Find, find place for free water to drink one because it was just expensive, you know, three to four US dollars, uh, sing dollar. It's about 12 to 16 ringgit for a bottle of mineral water. Can you imagine? Uh, that's 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 but but because the people earn that kind of income there, they can afford it, right? So that, that's where we are as a country right now. Right, uh, this is an indication of the Malaysian consumer price index, the CPI index, meaning an index that measures prices of consumer goods, all consumer goods in general, all consumer goods and services as well. And you can see, I started the conversation in 2022. If you remember my first episode in 2022, I talked about we're going to enter into a high inflation territory, which we don't know how high, but it's getting rather high, uh, a food crisis and an energy crisis. Now, we are seeing that the consumer price index is not slowing down. It's going up. And I will tell you why it's going up. But first of all, let's look at the inflation rate. You can see the inflation rate is measuring how many percent of inflation in the entire country. Now, this is just for the whole country of Malaysia, right? But if I specifically put it for Klang Valley alone, I think the inflation is three to four times of this number. Because mm -hmm. Klang Valley's population is different. The way you measure a cost and a transaction is different. So I think the inflation is very high in Klang Valley. But as a nation in general, you can see that we are on a, on a trajectory of high inflation rate. Right? So inflation is going to be a um, number one conversation that we'll be talking about in the next 18 months. Right? We will see inflationary pressure. I'll give you an example what kind of inflation there is in the market that could happen to our country and to, to, to that will impact us right now. Um, this is more important, which is something that we have not seen in a very long time. If you look at this chart here, it tells us just in the year of 2021, in July to the May of 2022, you can see the tremendous upside, uptick of inflation in the food part. Malaysian food inflation means the cost of food has gone up tremendously very high. Um, now, you may not feel it. I, I went yesterday night, I went, uh, uh, I thought I want to eat cheap food yesterday. I said cut cost a bit. Uh, so I took my wife to eat uh, Hokkien Mee, no, Hokkien Mee, care Hokkien Mee. There's a famous Hokkien Mee store I go to behind Tawaka Hospital, very famous one. In my opinion, it's one of the best Hokkien Mee. So if you want to try it, please bring me. I will take you there. Just pay for the bill. And I and the two of us ate two plates of single uh, noodles, and we had three side dishes. It cost us eighty eight ringgit. So when I think about it, right, that is is forty four ringgit per person eating Hokkien Mee, you know. Right, and we did not drink wine or beer or we didn't do any kind of that. It's just just Chinese tea, you know. And two of us eat two plates of noodle and three side dish. Uh, maybe I tap up one fried rice for my son for his dinner, but that's all. It's 88 ringgit. I, I, I calculate back, it's 44 ringgit per person. And I start thinking, how is this sustainable in the long run? John, if you're comparing it, like how, how much was it be before before you experienced this? I, I think it was probably 50-60% less than that before. Um, and I start thinking, what should I do, right? Should I, should I eat somewhere else? Because likely if I go somewhere else, it's not going to change. Or should I eat lesser? Then, then I have a problem because I eat lesser than I mean, I have energy, right? So, so I'm thinking a lot, like begin to start my as I'm preparing for this conversation today, right? Is begin to think what is the impact to the average people or to the majority of the people in our nation today, and to so some of all of us here today, what is the impact mm -hmm. of a, something sim simple as, as food inflation, right? Uh, and it's, it's going to be continuing to go out and I explain to you why I think it's not going to stop, the inflation is not going to stop. Right now, the key thing, the key reason why the inflation won't stop right now is because of commodity prices, especially in the area of energy. Right, so today I list down a list of energy um, uh, costs and prices of energy. If you look at the column of year, right, this year column here, you can see that the prices of all energy in this year has increased. Double digits, most of it is double digits. By the way, um, these slides I'm going to send to everyone. I will just support uh, do uh, at the end of the conversation. I want this slide to be sent to every agent in our company because I want you guys to understand this and use this as a tool to communicate, communicate to your clients as well. 
Okay, so if you want the slides, don't worry, we'll send the slides to you. So what we are seeing here is the cost of energy, which is the fundamental starting point of anything, is increasing double digit. The cost of energy from crude oil to, to, to gasoline, to heating, all kinds of energy. You can see here, whatever we use, because uh, electricity use coal. Like coal is used to generate electricity in our country, right? Um, natural gas and crude oil is meant to, is generating petrol, right? Or natural gas MGV to, to fuel tanks, especially in taxis, right? So all these, including ethanol, which is a very cheap form of technology uh, of, of, of energy, which is widely being uh, invested in Brazil, is now all increasing in price because there is a serious shortages of energy right now. Right, because of supply chain, because of the war in Iraq, may, uh, of Ukraine, I'm sorry. Many, many things happening in the global uh, arena that you and I cannot control. So what I'm telling you today, this is something you and I cannot control. Right, uh, That this is going to drive inflation very, very high. That is the challenge that we are facing. The next challenge we are going to, we're going to see right now uh, is the oil price. Now, I was reading some scary articles that I'm, I hope it doesn't happen, but this is an indication of where the oil price is going up right now. It's really on a spike upwards. Now, don't be surprised one day oil price go be beyond $150, beyond $200. That's something that there's certain people are speculating as the war persists right around the world, as there are trade sanctions all around the world, but that the cost of crude oil may increase. Now, this is very important because crude oil is a fundamental source of um, uh, energy production for petrol, petrol and petroleum. Right? So this is very important. Um, and that's why in certain countries in China, I think by 2035, they have made a stand in China that all cars will be electric in 2035. In 2035. I think in Europe is 2040 as well. So electrification of cars suddenly becomes a thing that is necessary because petrol is going to be very expensive. So, so it's the not oil so much price... the advancement of technologies, but very much on because of the pricing. Correct, correct. It's because of the commodities that is now the economy that is being driven by leaders, world leaders, that I don't think they are getting their act right. Because so many things happening and really it's not stopping, right? There's no end to this that we are seeing right now, right? Uh, every country is going through their own turmoil and the, lead, the global leaders, I think, are stuck right now with the Ukraine crisis. I don't know how they're going to resolve that. But that one key thing that impact is driving oil price and commodities mm. up, hard commodities is going up, right? When, so imagine this, when the commodity of oil goes up, it takes more, it's more expensive now to transport things from one point A to point B. It's more expensive, right? From, for flight, freight, freight to come in, it's more expensive for uh, shippings to come in because the first point of spending, the first uh, fundamental blocks of the economy is transportation and energy, right? So that's now going to be impacted in price. All right, the next thing is this. This is Malaysia. Uh, if you see this, uh, this is our Malaysia price. This is, by the way, quoted by our finance minister in parliament on 10th of March. This is the price at our pump right now. I, I want to ask a bold question. How many uh, of you are pumping Ron, 20, Ron 97? How many of you taking Ron 97 right now? Anyone, anyone, anyone using Ron 97? If you're using Ron 97, please press one. You're not, if you're using Ron 95, please press two. Let's do a survey here. If you're using diesel, please press three. Everybody using number two, right? Everybody's, yeah. <laughs> Right. So if you're using Ron 97, there's no impact to you. <laughs> <laughs> no, 97, that means you're driving a Ferrari. So <laughs> my car is still a Ron 95, right? Even though even though uh, prescribed to go 97, I say no, like Ron 95 can jalan, the engine can start, can move, I will take 95. The challenge we see here today is that the government is heavily subsidizing us. This subsidy for Ron 95 is going to amount to somewhere around 30 billion ringgit, which is a big sum in our budget and the country is not, has not budgeted for this. The 2022 budget that was stable last year has a subsidy of 5 billion ringgit only for oil, for petrol, I'm sorry. And now it's up to 30 billion because of the prices increase and anticipation of higher price to come. So the policy of subsidy will have to change. My opinion is it will change 
question is when, I don't know when. Who will change it? I also don't know who will change it, depending who is the government that changes it. But whoever that is in government, either now or later, somehow in the next three to six months, needs to relook at this. That's why you are hearing, that's why you are seeing now, they are testing the market by removing the subsidy for cooking oil. That's why you see a 24, 20%, 25% increase in food because cooking oil went up by 100%. So my wife said, my wife was very happy that the cooking oil went up because I will stop frying chicken at home. Because she said that my fried chicken dirties the house. Now that the oil has gone up by, by, by 100%, so frying chicken become very expensive. And you want to fry chicken, you cannot say use less oil. That is not fried chicken, right? <laughs> so, you're, so, so, so that subsidy has been removed. And that clearly has impacted a lot of people. But we don't see the pain yet until this subsidy is removed. And my opinion is it will be removed. And you imagine today, uh, if you are using a fried chicken, not so nice one. Uh, a fried, <laughs> uh, if if a fried chicken good, uh, KFC or change to a fried, they save a lot. They say they, they save a lot of oil, but not nice one. A fried, yeah. the, the real oil is nice, right? But anyway. Uh, sorry, back from fried chicken, uh, back, back to the petrol price. Uh. The petrol price, when it increased back to 370 or 4 ringgit or whatever the price is, right, you will see an increase of fuel for you and I about 100%. Yeah, yes, exactly. That's a lot. So, Nicholas, how much, how big is your car tank? Uh? How much is your food, food tank right now? Yeah, I've just done a calculation. So, it's about 70 liters for any sedan car in, in markets, right? You're talking about Camry uh, 2.0, and all, it's about two point. Is about 70 liter, which is like uh, if you're talking about full tanks, right? Roughly the cost used to be, I mean, currently it's about 140 or uh, over. If you're talking about full tank. If the subsidy is being removed, right? It will then it, it will then eventually become 260 ringgit for one full tank. Yeah. Which is crazy. Yeah. That is the that is if the price is kept this way. That yep. is if the price is kept at this price, right? Without increasing, right? I want to my friend in Singapore is paying about uh, three six three fifteen sing dollar, which is about six ring about 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 nine ringgit per liter right now in Singapore, uh, because they are not importer of they are not exporter of petrol. We have our export, that's why we can control the cost. Um, but it's crazy, right? You think about it, Nick. It's two hundred eighty dollars. Then you start thinking, should I drive out today? Or not? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And, yeah. and I do a calculations for the if let's say you're driving a Hilux and if you're talking about a kind of 80 liter, like uh it will roughly cost you about 300 over ringgit if let's say there's rich subsidies to remove. Yeah. Really yeah. So yeah. I, I'm a bit thankful because my car is a 50 liter petrol, it's a 50 liter with an electric car, electric engine, right? But that also is going to increase by double. And I and I think double to triple is possible in the next 18 months um due to the fluctuation of prices. Um, and this is going to happen, guys. This is going to happen. When you see this happening, you will see another round of spike. So potentially, the inflation, short-term inflation, can go from 25% to 40% for all things that we are buying right now that is necessity. right? And this is happening because I believe the government eventually will remove the fuel subsidy or change the, for the concept of fuel subsidy. There are talks right now, you watch the, the, the news, they're talking about how can we um, how can the government target certain people uh, or certain household or certain car owners? They give subsidies for certain car owners, right? Which I think that's a better approach personally because the government just needs the money for other stuff, right? And another thing that we will see happening is potentially higher tax rates. Um, well, coming back GST, which I think is necessary for the economy, even though it's not popular, but I think it's necessary. So all these things, right? creates an impact to our income. It, it reduces our disposable income. It also reduces the strength of the, the, the quality of our income, or meaning the, the, the amount of things that we can buy with our income, right? So what will happen, I think, in the next 18 months is inflation. And there are four types of inflation uh, here. The first type is the creeping mild inflation, which we will face every year, slowly but surely. Then there's the walking inflation is about three to 10% a year. I don't think that's happening. A galloping inflation is more than 10%. I think it's the lower quadrant, the galloping inflation and the hyperinflation. And I think you will see hyperinflation in the first six months this year. I, I foresee that, uh, that the first six months, we will see a season of hyperinflation uh, where certain things that we used to buy, we used to use, we used to consume, 
is going up and it's already showing up. For example, cooking oil is already at a hyperinflation standpoint. So certain things that you buy, certain things that you experience might be in a creeping inflation. But generally, what I'm seeing is the food products, the things that we use day to day is increasing uh, in price. Now, what does this mean? What does this mean uh, for us? It means today our income, this is a very interesting cartoon, our income is not sufficient to sustain our lifestyle. This is scary, but in reality, our income is not sufficient to sustain our lifestyle anymore. If you have a big lifestyle, you will be challenged to live, continue living that lifestyle. Now, I want all of us to do a quick exercise right now. All of us do a quick exercise right now. If you have a piece of pen and a paper on a phone, I want you to imagine or think about what's your current expenses right now for per month. I want you to write down, if you don't have to tell anyone, give you the next 10 seconds, write down the current expenses for your for your for your day-to-day, -day, for your monthly commitments, your, your bank commitments, your credit card commitments, your loan commitments, your children's education commitments, your food, all these commitments. I want you to write down that number right now. Now, those who have wrote written down the number don't have to be accurate, just a, a, just an estimation. Those who have that number written down, please just press one on the chat box. Press one to tell me that you have done. Right, come on, keep on coming. Those who have done, please press one. Please press one to tell me that you have done writing that number. Now, I want you to write that number, multiply by 40%. <laughs> that will be for these six months. In these six months, multiply by 40%. I want you to multiply it by six. So first thing is that number of a monthly expense, multiply by 40% and then multiply it by six. You will get a number. If you, go, you have, if you have written that number correctly done, please put five on the chat box. If you have done that calculation, please put five on the chat box. Okay, that's your this six months potential cost of living. Now, I want you to take that number, that monthly number that's multiplied by five, assuming today your if your income, if your expenses is 5,000 and you put a 40%, it should be 7,000 something or 8,000 ringgit, right? Now you take that 8,000 ringgit or the number of that monthly income, you then uh, multiply by 10% and you multiply by 12. That's for 2023. Let's think about 2023 because you will see another 10% potential inflation in 2023. So you take whatever monthly income that you, monthly expenses multiply by 40%, right? That number, and you multiply again by 10%. You will get another number and you multiply by 12. If you have done this number, please press 8. If you have found the number, please press 8. If you, are not under, if you don't understand, please ask me. I'll repeat again. So take this month's, this, this new number that is multiplied by 40%, multiply it by 10% and add 12 and times 12. If you have done it already, please press 8. If you're done already, please press eight. Okay. Some of you, how many of you are scared of doing it right now? How many of you are fearful of doing it right now? How many of you are going to see the number? What's the first, what is the first expression that you have? What is the first emotion that you had? When you look at that number, how do you feel? Nick, when you look at the number, how do you feel? Scary, man. <laughs> Explain your scariness. <laughs> how are we going to cope with, with this? And I'm just thinking like uh, the coming weeks of discussions, how are we going to go about it? <laughs> but that's the reality we must prepare for, right? That's the, that is going to happen. And as leadership in this organization, it is my job to help prepare everyone to make sure that we are still sustainable after 18 months. And that's the reality. Now, the mindset first must be having the right perspective. You may, must want to accept the truth. We must want to accept the what's the worst case scenario. One of my business coaches always tell me, 
if you think about the worst case scenario and you behave like it, likely you will survive in any, any, any crisis. Right? Now you think about it this way, 18 months of income. Now you add all those numbers together. You took the first six months and you add the first 18 months. Get a number right now. Can you find the number right now? Add the first six months that I talk about plus your next 12 months, the whole 18 months. What is that number? Set that number right now. Tell me, tell me if you have done that number. If you have done that number, please press two. You add six months plus 12 months is an 18 months number. There's a huge number there. Okay, you have done it, please press two. If you have done that number, that calculation, please press two. Right, if you have done it right now, that is the number that should be part of your goal in your GPS this year. You should be thinking in these next six months, how am I going to earn the kind of money so that I can be safe? Now, imagine today, by the end of December, you earn that total amount of money already. The money that you add, the six months plus 12 months, right? the 18 months uh, 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 cost of living that you have, you have achieved all this money, all this income by December this year. How would you feel? If you have achieved, put in the chat box right now, if you have achieved all this income right now by December 2022, that will finance the entire 18 months of your life for your family. How would you feel, guys? You feel secure. Feel relief. Feel secure. Yeah. What else? What else are you feeling? Only one person feels secure. The rest, I don't know what happened. Still calculating. Can breathe. Still calculating. Wow, the number very big, man. Right. You feel secure. You feel safe. So the idea smiling. is this. Smiling. Someone is smiling right now. The idea is we should think about business this way. The first thing is perspective. The first thing is we need to understand where we are. We're going to live in the monastery. Don't love, bro. Just because you cut your hair, brought up, the monastery may not accept you. Okay, so don't. <laughs> Relief. Now, the, the law equilibrium says when there is a moment when the market changes, right? So when the market is changing, right? What will happen is there will be lesser opportunities. There will be lesser opportunities as the markets come down, right? So will be the number of agents in our market. So this is taken from the book of Shift. If you have the book shift, uh, look at the law of equilibrium, which is in the beginning part of the book. It talks about during a very challenging market. Now, by the way, guys, we came out from a very challenging market in the past two years. We are now entering to another challenge cycle. So it's a double shift that we are going through, meaning there will be more agents flush out during this season. And I hope all of us here, all 100 of us here today, will still remain in business um, at the end of this year because our goal is to help you pass through these 18 months as we are journeying together as a team, right? But there will be many agents that will be flushed out of the market because it is not easy to think 18 months. Most agents today, when they are flushed out, is because they are thinking everyday sales. They are thinking sales of today. They are thinking, how can I make money today? Versus an agent who's thinking, how can I make money for the next 18 months that by December, I have a goal to hit so that I can have finance, financial uh, support for my whole family and my whole lifestyle for the next 18 months. That agent who think like that will beat an agent who's thinking about sale today. Because when you're thinking about 18 months income, your mindset is very different. Your approach is different. Your action is different, right? So this is where during this time, during tough times, um, most agents that fall down here who are still alive in this business, they will bounce back and become better agents. Now, in 2021, we studied the numbers, 2021, 2020, 2021, some agents went through COVID. It was the best years in their industry, in their life, in their career. I have an agent that become a million, we have an agent that become a million dollar agent for the first time in a career because she thrived during the tough time because she was thinking how to earn more money in a very tough time. Because when the market was very easy and going, everything is easy and going, right? But when it's tough, we push harder, right? We, we think differently, we behave differently. So I'm anticipating another challenging year ahead, 18 months ahead, right? So the goal is to think of a new mindset that will give us new results. And the mindset is this big number called 18, right? How many of us will think and commit that we will earn our income for 18 months in the next six months? Meaning at the end of this year, 
we should have enough income to sustain us until the end of next year. That's a good goal. I encourage everyone to set this goal in your business plan. Now, you have not done your GPS or you have done your GPS, you would like to sit down and reset your GPS to think about how to earn the 18 months income in the next six months. Because then you are free from any issues or headache that the inflation of the economy is happening right now. Now, we can't change the economy. We can't change. You can vote new leaders in, but I'll tell you the same. It will not change much right now because it's a global thing. It's, a, it's, it's happening everywhere. But what we can change is the way we think about our business. So set a goal that can help you hit 18 months in six months right now. Relook at your GPS and start hustling. Now, one of the key challenge that I think agents should think about today is this formula, right? And this is the struggle I see many agents right now. They are looking, agents are looking for a sale today. What can I do that generate a lead that wants to buy today? Now, those are important. Those are great, for, for fantastic, but it's not enough. It's not going really enough. If you're only thinking about that right now, it's not enough because potentially what you are doing was two sales a month or two transactions a month that will give you month-to-month -month income. But right now, because of what's happening, you want to earn 18 months income, you're going to do four transactions in a challenging market, right? So you must change or add things to your formula in order for you to make money. But I think today, most importantly, and Nicholas and I had this conversation on, on our alignment camp uh, last week, and you brought up a good point, Nicholas, that a lot of times we are trying to track things that we don't understand how to track. But mm. one of the key things that we can track is leads. Why don't you share a little bit about that? Why? leads are important to track. Yeah, I think, I think it's very important. I think often uh, in, in the past uh, six months, as I experienced uh, uh, the measurement that we have, we, we used to only track appointments. Okay, let's, let's keep going for appointments, the number of appointments that we actually have. And we actually have forgotten that actually appointments, if you, fast, if you actually backtrack a little bit, they actually come from contacts and leads. If we are not clear of the number of leads that we actually have and number of uh, contacts that we actually have, then we actually mis misalign in terms of how are we actually calculating the things. We can keep looking for the things that we want to because appointments happens on a daily basis, the most that you measure on the weekly. And after that, I think I bet no one actually look at like this entire month, how many appointments do I actually have? This entire, uh, the last three months, how many appointments do I have? Because it's probably kind of challenging to, to track, but the number of leads are always there, right? It makes it easier for you to, to do that, that works and, and homework at the same time as well. Uh, why don't you share with us because what's the understanding of the definition of leads? Because I think a lot of us may have different definition, definitely different definition of leads, right? So can you share with us what's the meaning of leads? Okay, definitions of leads. Right? Okay, what we have to build, build, build. Yeah, let me build, build. Okay, all right, it's good. Okay, definition of leads are basically a one-way communications. So if if I've been uh, trying to contact John and John have not been responding to me, is he has been always been lead to me, right? And if let's say I have John's contact, is if I have John's uh, information, let's let's not talk, talk about contact. If I have John's information like the name, uh, email address, and, and the phone number, that's John will always remain as a lead for me until John responds to me. The moment that I have interactions with, with John, then it becomes a context, right? And Joanne uh, asked questions that really I find tracking leads more challenging. And why is it more challenging? It's more challenging if let's say you do not have a right place to basically track because all you need to know is basically what is the number because you have not gone through a proper communication yet then it actually doesn't uh, translate into a contact right so a lot of time we don't understand what is the lead and what is the contact a lead comes in or if lead is basically a list of names that i have right now like i can go to the master listing database and say i want to take a list of contact owner contacts of this whole taman and that's my leads but to make it into a contact is I need to have two-way communication with them. I need to send them a message and they must respond to me. That is a contact. Because from a contact, it becomes a potential appointment. Yep. You, if you, even if you have said that you have multiple sources of leads, like what uh, Joanne has mentioned, that you're, you're I mean, like the tracking is even easier. Because say, for example, if you have five uh, multiple sources of leads, right? When, when you started to communicate with that leads, where is that the central place of uh, tracking this? They need to be a central place. Say, for example, I have leads from 
assuming that you have a source one, source two, source three, source four, source, source five, right? Every source will probably have, let's say, a thousand or two thousand. That adding that up is potentially going to give you that's the central a list. And the leads should only come uh, consider a leads when you actually have started that communications. If you got the leads and you have not starting that conversations with them, that you are unable to basically qualify them as a, as a leads as well. Right. You, you so, have to start, start the communications. Right, right. So we must first add leads in and I'll, and I'll go through a, a definition of what I think a good lead database looks like. So it's all coming back to how are we clear about the leads, the context, the appointments that we are working on and how are we tracking that? And most importantly, how does this, what does it mean in our database, right? So we are very big on database because I feel today an agent who's focusing on today's sale is not focusing on the future and the whole perspective of a broader time frame. Let's talk about today. It's about the next six to 18 months. How are we building our business that we have enough people to stay in contact to build appointments and potential sales but the fundamental is this is the flow you get a lead in you make contact with the lead set up the appointments potentially translate that appointment into a sale if you don't have a control from the lead point onwards then you have a challenge you have a problem because you're hoping that something will happen right that's the idea you're not controlling you're not knowing the number right right so the idea is to track your deal. So, so basically what Riza is asking, what if the list stops in the middle? So you should be tracking number one. The first thing all of us today, when you finish this call, go back and track the number of people that you're working on right now. Like the people that you're talking to right now that is already in the process of looking for a home, wanting to sell a home, wanting to buy a home, or rent, or whatever it is. Those are what we call opportunities. You should be going into your opportunities applet and start keying in what's the opportunities that you have right now. And you will come out with this number here. And you ask yourself, your 18 months income, is it sufficient over here not in the potential income? If it's not, then you know that it's not sufficient. The question is, do you know this or not? Do you know how many opportunities you're talking about or not? So if I ask anyone here right now, how many potential sales or potential opportunities that you, are, you have in your pipeline? If you do not know, this is the applet that you should be working on. Nick, you want to talk a little bit about this? Yeah, I, th I think it's uh, extremely important to utilize the tools that we have, especially with uh, this uh, opportunity applets we have in command. Uh, actually give you a very clear clarity. And I like particularly when uh, John, when you mentioned that, hey, you know, like we have to look at our 18 months expenses and see whether we can actually look at this potential income for the next 18 months. And that's right. probably the, the better way to basically... Uh, see how our GC, uh, GPS is being, uh, being set. And if, if you basically look over here, uh, if you have been using many type of uh, CRM uh, out there, this potentially be uh, the best CRM uh, out there where it actually is very clearly for you with three different pipelines with listings. If you're doing uh, sub-sale, that's where you basically list all your properties over here. And buyers is basically you put all the buyers, whether you're doing sub-sale or projects, you put all your buy potential buyers over here. And leases are where you basically put your landlord and also uh, a tenants, all the informations over here. With adding all these three uh, in together, all these three pipelines, then you're able to see what will be the potential income that you, you will be basically get for the next 18 months Yeah, when you close all this. Right. And this is helping agents to think ahead that if I don't have enough potential income, I need to add more into the pipeline. That means my leads is not enough. Likely you got the lead problem. Right. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's not enough, and also that uh, you have not uh you, you have you have not have enough opportunities to to talk to, right? Correct. And people who Correct. say that they have they have no leads problem, I think that you 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 could be kidding because uh if you have no issues, then you'll be basically putting in a lot of pipelines over here. Right, and and the, the idea the, and the reality is Gary Keller coaches all the time. There will never be enough leads. There will never be enough lead sources. There will never be enough leads. Right, it's important to maintain. Now, I may be a lead that wanted to buy something that I, I say, hey, I'm gonna pull back and stop right now. That is still a lead. Then you put it back into another section of your of your of your system and you follow up differently with them, right? The leads that you have that is very urgent that is looking to buy in the next three, six, uh, one to three months, you are intensely putting your opportunities, right? The one that is not intense one is a long-term nurture, you put it into a smart plan. So you need to think about your business this way. Um, I, I, I think your goal today, if you can today, 
um, list down top 10 listings, top 10 buyers or leases in their respective pipelines and phases and stages today, if you can, as an exercise to show and see where you are in your business. So, for example, if today your expenses per month is, is let's say, 20,000 or 10,000 ringgit, right? Is your potential income more than your expenses right now? How much more? How many percent more? Right? And if you look at an annual basis, your annual, if your six months uh, expense is 60,000, is your potential income enough to cover the 60,000? If it's not enough to cover the 60,000, that means there's a lag in your business production. You, you better work hard on some of the stuff that you are supposed to work on. It brings clarity to understand that. Now, one important thing is your database because why are we talking so much about database sales? Is because I've seen so many agents focusing on today's sales. They don't think about six months, 18 months, right? Now, database is actually a container that holds information about your leads and contact. It helps you identify what is the lead, what is the contact, and how do you communicate with them systematically for the leads and the contacts that you're in. Um, and a smart database or smart data bank allow you to have planned and meaningful communication with your database. Nick, want to talk a little bit about this? Yeah, this is the entire flow of from lead capturing uh, to having the database uh, and also to basically how you can basically cultivate uh, the database uh, for conversion. Then you can continue to repeat uh, and having new uh, new database to, to basically put into this and also continue that you actually get the referral. We can actually cover this in a very in-depth uh, when we have the database uh, bootcamp on how you can basically turn your database into, into data bank. Right, right. And... And I want to give a definition of how a database quality looks like. So there are three levels of a millionaire database. And I found this very, very interesting when I look and study this material, and I think it makes sense. Level one is some of us are, may, may still be struggling here. It means we have the essential name. Miss Neymar is not Mr. Tan. Ah. Because if everyone is Mr. Tan, they got three Mr. Tan, it's Tan, 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 got three, all the Tans there, right? But you don't know which is Mr. Tan. You must know the name full name, the first name and the last name, right? Jonathan Tan, Nicholas Tan. You must have that information first. Then it's considered a good data, a good starting point of a database. You must have their contact info, their mobile phone, uh, office phone, whatever mobile contactable phone that you have. Um, you must have probably some past business or past contact records, meaning why he call you for, right? And you must, by the way, must have email, right? The contact info is including email as well. Uh, first name, last name phone number, mobile number, email, and past business and past contact record. And number four, it's at real communication, meaning I will communicate with you at any time. At any time, B is very random. So this is the first part. Now, if you don't have this right now, talk to your market center leadership and find out what's the plan that you can have to work on this, because this is the number one fundamental. This is what we call essential database. If you don't have this, either in your spreadsheet or in command, it shouldn't be just in your mobile phone phone book. That is not a database. There is just a lot of phone numbers and some names that random people that you don't know who they are, you can't remember. Essentially, this is number one. Number two is effective database. You obtain permission to be in communication with that. You collect a lot of personal information and insights and preference. So for example, Mr. Tan uh, likes to buy uh, two new properties for his children by next year. There's some insights and information and the budget is around 600 to 800,000 in the area of PJ and Subang. You've got those kind of information. Uh, you segment them in groups or oh, their owners, their buyers, uh, their sellers, their $1 million age buyers or whatever. It is very purposeful and consistent communication because you already know what they want. Weekly or bi-monthly, you'll be sending them some information. This is effective database. Now, very few people in our organization is here right now because step one was not done correctly. When you do step one correctly, step two comes in, right? And the last one that I like the most is that you have exceptional database where it's automated and custom communication built around triggers. Meaning every month, certain messages go out to certain people automatically because they're all set in the system. Nick, you want to talk a little bit about automation here? 
the automation is many of us actually understand it with a smart plan that we actually have, right? The smart plan that we, we use to be, uh, we, we use to, uh, we use it in command. A uh, system is where you can automate the SMS, we can automate the, the, the email to our, our clients, where for leads, we actually do about 19 touches uh, a year. And also when we have contacts, we do about 36 uh, touches a year. So all of these touches are very important for us to really understand. Uh, it's, it's very hard for us to just sit down and think through what you want to do. But if you can basically sit down and think through it uh, at one time and plan out the entire automations uh, for yourself, then you're able to see the effectiveness of it uh, kick in. Because the least when you expect it, right, uh, that the, uh, then the, the customers will basically then respond to you. Say, for example, if you have done the automations for the next uh, 12 to 15 uh, weeks automations, then even if you're not in touch with the customers and, and the messages will actually automatically send it to your customers and your customer, when the customers start to respond to you, then you're able to say, hey, you know, like uh, even I have forgotten these customers, even I put them in different segmentations, then the, the responses just keep coming back to me and you'll be basically really busy responding to the customers. And we have a tool like uh, we call it the Canterbury Activate where we helped you to automate the, the WhatsApp uh, messaging as well. And of course, we have not gone through uh, it in details on how we can basically do the automations. But in coming weeks, when we actually go through the tech uh, reading Mondays, that we actually go through in, in deeper <clears throat> on how we can basically do all these automations. Right. But the fundamental issue that you see today, Nicholas, is that some of, most of us are not having our database stored, properly stored. Yeah. Right? We're not, we're not making, how, why do you think there's a challenge mm -hmm. For in your in your observation and your journey with some agents that we are have right now in our system, why do you think there's a challenge for them to 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 kind of sort their database properly? I think number one is um, the the biggest challenge is uh is the that number one the database is messy and because the database is messy because of the naming convention that we actually have and I see many type of naming conventions with the database that the agents have. Say for example, you have the name. Then you put a dot to the property and then you put a dot to the budget and you have a dot whether this owner investor so there are actually many types of ways i think i probably see 20 to 30 types of uh, naming conventions for all the database it's very right. important that uh, we we clean the database once for all even though it's very painful to do so but it's definitely worth it so is the once i think it's always go back to the essential and the basic and the fundamentals and of course, because no one actually teach, teach our agents what is the right way to basically do so, despite we have a lot of materials and probably haven't get it. So, I mean, like we are very big in, in this, uh, especially these seasons of times, right, to really get our agents to, to look into the entire potential of the database. I think mentioned many times that uh, unless we, we actually have a big database, that's when it comes to 5,000, 10,000, we won't experience uh, the power of the database yet. And also want to touch a little bit of uh, the potential income loss if we do not have uh, a that if we do not look into our database. Assuming right now, if you look into your your phone book, your mobile number, you have about let's say you put about you have about one thousand database with you, and averagely that uh, the home ownership uh, the tenure of ownerships per uh, per database that you actually have right. We, the idea of research is about 70% of the home uh, ownership tenure in, in Malaysia, which, which, which means like 70% of people actually can afford to basically buy a, buy a house. And also like uh, almost every eight years that uh, people will basically rebuy uh, a place uh, over again. So, right. so which means, let's say for example, if we have 1,000 people in a database and assuming that 1,000 of them, like you actually able to uh, actually eight, about 8% 8 of uh, Let's say, for example, about 0.8% uh, of, of them actually want to uh, will potentially be buying properties from you. That would be about 200 people. Right. Right. So no, not, not 200 people, sorry, but about 20 people. Right. Right. With, with the 20 people, assuming that each of the 20 people, 50% uh, of, 20% uh, of them can actually refer you, that you're able to, to basically see that uh, you have about 20 to 25 people in your database per 1,000, that it's able to bring you uh, that referral and they're potentially going to buy. If you have been mislook on that, on the 25 times an average uh, uh, sales that you actually want to bring in, the commission that you're going to have, that will be the potential loss of income that you, you basically look into if you have not looked into the database carefully. Right. So, so this is what I want to share, what Nicholas is talking about, is this... Um, 
that I have this um, chart here that I want to quickly share is that there are two types of agents. And what Nicholas is talking about, agent that's building tomorrow's business. But today, a lot of agents are in the today's trap. I want to find a business today. Find me a buyer that I want to buy today. Now, those are important. You can do that as well. I'm not saying don't stop doing that. But you're going to think about tomorrow's business. And this is what I think about it. If Assuming today there are 100 people in your market right now. Let's say you are in, let's say, uh, a particular condo block. And there are 100 people actually looking for this property one. Um, 65 and 58 are off the market, meaning they are not ready to buy, but they are interested to buy. Only seven are today's business. Only seven of them are buying today. But we have 50 agents fighting for the seven buyers. But nobody is fighting for the 665 or 58 buyers. They are, ready, are wanting to buy, but they're not buying today. So you're missing out on this opportunity. This is what Nicholas is talking about. But we are so fixated about today's buyers that we forgot about tomorrow's sales. And that's why we are always struggling to look for today's buyers because the whole market and the way the, the system in our industry is set up that all the advertising outlets are helping you get today's buyers, but you have so many people competing for today's buyers. But you're missing out on 65 and 58 people that is already in thinking of buying, but they're not in the market yet. They are thinking about it. They are maybe, maybe they need to sell their property, which is another opportunity that you have. Uh, maybe they need to lease out their property, or maybe they are just waiting for certain things to happen in their life before they buy, but they are already intentionally wanting to buy. And when they become today's buyers, before they look at the portals, they call you first. That's what we want to bring your business to that perspective, right? And that's how I think in the next 18 months, You've got to corner the whole entire market. You cannot just focus on today's market. In a, in a very high, um, in a very up market, in a market that is a good market where economy is booming and all that, yeah, today's market is fine because there are so many opportunities. But agree with me today, how many of you facing there are lesser buyers in the market right now? How many of you agree with me there are lesser, lesser opportunities in the market right now? I mean, compared to last year, of course, there's more. But in general... For the past five years, we are seeing lesser opportunities in the market right now. Right? So, so it's important for us to think about our business long term. Right? On the next 18 months, how can you think about winning the market share from the people that's already interested to buy, but they're not ready? How many of you think that buyers are today are, are thinking about, oh, Let's wait and see what happens first. How many of you have buyers like that? How many of you have buyers that i interested to buy, but I'm thinking about it first? <clears throat> Who is, how are you communicating with them? How are you working with them? Because throughout the next 18 months, likely they will buy something. They may buy something. But if you're not talking to them, you're not keeping them in the, if you're not earning their mind share, they're going to call someone else. Yeah, yeah, Nicholas is also thinking about buying. Uh, so, so anyone, you want to add Nicholas to your database, you call him first. He's the first person you call right now. Uh, then you can add him to your database and keep on sending him messages, right? Right. And since the trick is, is how you test your whether you've got follow-up or not. So he's testing you all right now. So I don't know. You want to fall in the trap of Nicholas, you go, right? Correct. They also give us the current situation, especially loan rate. Now, loan rates are going to keep going up. One thing I forgot to explain to you guys, you will not see the loan rates coming up. But by the way, loan rates has been all-time low. If I look at the past five, six years, interest rate was much higher than where we are today. And I think it's okay. I think the interest rate will not affect our business, right? It will not affect our business so much. It will just change a certain, it's just a certain atmosphere, a certain emotional fear about it. But eventually everyone will afford to pay the loan and it's okay. The impact is not as great because our loans, our rates are still relatively very low. But a lot of people are waiting, right? And how are you talking to them? How are you communicating them? Because... If you don't communicate with them, eventually they will go to Property Guru or go to iProperty one day and find someone else because you are not talking to them. So the idea is use a database and how do you use a database? Nick, what, what are some of the strategies or some of the activities that you are planning for the organization today in terms of helping agents to get on board database? I think we have uh, basically uh, completed our prop tech. Uh, the last... Uh, the last uh, the last week, last week of uh, June, and we have 
receive a tremendous uh, feedbacks on that. So many agents have basically come back to us and say, hey, you know, we need a lot more physical, uh, face to face, uh, hands on uh, training, uh, training on this. And if eventually, what we're going to do is uh, after evaluating and looking at all the feedbacks, uh, prop tech would be potentially going to happen again. Uh, we will let the market center make announcements when will be the, the next prop tech for each market center and how we can basically uh, level up our group of uh, coaches, uh, trainers to come together to basically do this together. It's very important for us to, to really understand for some of you uh, in, in this call, you, you are the coaches that you have been helping a lot of other agents to basically come into the technology adoptions. So we want you to come, come in and come back to, to serve. Uh, if, if you're interested to, to come alongside, to serve alongside with us uh, on how you can basically help other agents uh, in terms of building a better data, database and how they can uh, follow up effectively. We have a lot of uh, trainings coming up uh, for each and every one of, uh, of you for, for this as well. Like we have uh, Tina will say that even for many years uh, as a long time agent, you have still struggling with database. You're not alone. We have encountered many agents. Uh, even some of the very top agents will actually come in and say that uh, they have a database. When you really look at it, that database is actually not functioning. Yeah, not functioning in such a way that you can't automate it. You can't, let's say, for example, to me, if you have a good database, which means right today you have a, you have a property, with just a few clicks that you're able to know who you are going to send this, this to exactly. And as simple as that, instead of sitting to think through who should I WhatsApp these four or five people in order to, if they want to buy or not, if it's not going to be with that anymore. So we have to change the culture and habit of everyone. That the moment that you have this new property, new project, immediately you're very clear. And this will be the group and just click on this tagging and immediately this email will be out. And then this, this WhatsApp will be out. It's as, as fast and as straightforward as that. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it's all about even the, like a new listing in market. If I got a new listing in PJ, very rare listing and it's priced correctly. I want to even sell it off before people know about it. Before the signboard goes up, it should be sold. Uh, yeah. And that's that's how we should do it by, by having our database properly tagged. And in a matter of minutes, right, we are able to pull it out and just send it out without thinking so much about it, Nick. That's just what we are trying to help agents to come to a point. Because this will beat other competitive agents in your area that don't think like that. Because majority of agents, and I, I talk to many agents around the market, they are all focusing on today's sales. Everybody is hoping that everything will be okay, but it's not okay, right? And often the first thing is I would think, okay, how do I do the advertisements, right? When, when you have this new project, you always think, okay, how am I going to run this ad? So you've always been bombarded with like, I could run ads, I could maintain my social media and I know actually in fact, uh, I, I would I would I would see this very differently. I think first thing first is always our sphere of influence. It's always the the phone that we actually have, right? And there's so much uh um, um money inside here and, until we basically sort it out and properly, then you're able to see the impact of it. Right. Right. And ads are meant to help you add more leads into your database. It's meant yep. to build database. Um, sometimes it help you sell, but majority of the time it's help you build the database so that the database will begin to generate sales for you as you go along the way. That's our goal. That's just really our goal. And how many of you went through our prop tech event last week, like two weeks ago? How many of you think that the prop tech event helped you to start the ball rolling? If you if you did, please say yes on the chat box. How many of you felt that prop tech event was good in your respective market center that you are able to set up your database? Yes, yeah, some of you say, yes, yes, it was good, right? You're able to set up your database. You're able to drive campaigns. You're able to look at looking at smart plans. So we are looking at a series of more of these physical physical events. We want to do physical trainings, right? Hands-on trainings to agents who are specifically looking for certain things, right? Um, and I think the foundation is still database. The foundation is still database. And some of us who have done the database part, how do you create messages? How do you build a systematic way of touching base your 33 people, 33 touches for your context. And there's something that Nicholas and the team and myself is working hard to bring it to you uh, live physically rather than virtually. Because I feel that, you all feel that um, during the PropTech event, about 300 of the agents that came in start running their business and start setting up their database uh, effectively. So that's the change that we are doing, right? Now, as we are running out of time, I want to just pause here and just, just kind of Give this last thought to all of us, right? It's not it's not only one thing, it's one thing at a time. This is the one thing approach. And my suggestion for you right now, we know there's a crisis coming. It's already here, guys. The inflation problems, the cost of living problems, they're already here right now. You can't change that. I can't change that. But what we can change is to focus what's our one thing to make it work right now. 
the first thing you do right now, if you have not done, is set a goal to help you finance your, your business and your life for the next 18 months. What does that goal look like? So I give you the formula, is six months multiplied by 40% this year of expenses, and next year's expenses multiplied by 10% for 12 months. You might you add that 18 months in uh, expenses out, your goal should be something like that, or even more than that times 20%. You should be something like that. That's the goal you should set for the next second half of this year. That's your one thing right now. If you're not done that, go and do that today. Second thing is look at your database. If there's a database bootcamp right now, I suggest you all sign up. Because I believe that is where you will see the value of what we are trying to bring in here. Look at your database, change your mindset, and start thinking about how can I build a sustainable business. Track your leads, your contacts, your appointments. So that is the thing that you need to track right now um, in order for you to live your business right. So I think the first thing that I ask all of us is to change that mindset to think about how to earn your income of 18 months in six months. How do you do that? When you think like that, now you may not achieve it in December, but what if you achieve tw uh, uh, eight months or 10 months of income in, in December? Are you a better position than right now? What if you've done 50% uh, of your goal? Are you in a better position than right now? I would say yes. I will agree. I will argue yes, that you are in a better position and then you're, you will be in the hit of where your peers are today because you are thinking ahead, right? Nicholas, any last words as we close today? What, what do you think are some of your last advice to our agents today as we close? Yeah, I'm particularly agree with this one thing at a time. I think the first thing first, uh, I agree with you that the first thing first is basically to know where uh, where our GPS is very clear, a uh, very clear GPS. I think the second is basically to to know the to know the actual uh to know the actual situations where you are and by putting in all the opportunities. And the third thing would be look into the database because without knowing where you want to go and feasibility, like uh, having database, you might not understand uh, why is it for as well. Right. right. Even as a region, you know, region running a region, we have a database of agents that we want to um, recruit today. Right. And yep. we have that database. This We're very clear what's that number and how many contacts and how many appointments are we setting. And, and that's important, even as that as a region, as a market center leadership are running recruitment drives, they are thinking like that as well. And I think it's no difference from your sales business as a real estate agent. Now, I have all those uh, the slides uh, that Christine has just shared on the chat box. Please uh, feel free to take it, feel free to um, use it as tools to help communicate with your clients. As we move forward uh, in 2022, this year, second okay, half, right? Yeah, we, we want to prepare for the worst and we want to ac expect the best because when you're in that mindset, you behave very differently. And most importantly, as we move on to the new uh, series, uh, Nick, we want to talk about the new series moving forward next week. What are some of the things that you'll be teaching and you'll be helping agents to understand uh, in your next Meeting Monday series next week? Uh, next week, I think we will probably have a break. And we will basically uh, coming back the, the next uh, the next uh, week after we will basically look into all all the uh, tools that we have in Keller Williams how all these tools uh, will go in depth in, in some of the tools on how it basically uh, helps you uh, in your business and instead of uh, telling you the functions of every tools that we want to basically come in and tell you that how these functions can uh, it, uh, technically help you in in the business. And that's one. And we're going to interview some of the agents who have actually achieved success uh, through some of all these tools as well. Yeah. Yeah. So, 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 so Nicholas and the team has prepared um, because we want to help you build a, a tomorrow business, not only a today's business. We're going to build the today's business, which you're all very good at, but the tomorrow business where we are building uh, a, a bigger business so that you will come back and say that, hey, your business has grown two to three times. That's our goal. Because when you think about bigger bigger things, you think big, right? You will likely experiencing bigger outcomes uh, from your actions, right? So that's really what we want to build, uh, help you build. And Nick and the team is using the tools that we have to help you develop that business to make sure that we are all still ahead of the market, even in this challenging time. So it's okay if the inflation has gone up 40% because your business just went up 100%. It's okay. You can survive that. That's the only way to survive, right? When, you are, when your business is, 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 is growing 100%, inflation of 40% is not going to hurt you so much. It will hurt you, but not so much, right? You are still having a chance, a survival chance or a thriving chance. Your lifestyle is not affected, right? Right. Can I have the announcements please before we end? 
Can I have the announcements, please, before we end? Got a couple of announcements, and I know some of you have been asking us about certain things about 360 plus. We now have a service for uh, 360 uh, virtuals, uh, what do you call it, uh, shots for Metaport shots for your listings. Um, if you go to worldwideweb.kw360plus.com, um, you can book a scan for only 110 ringgit. Someone will make an appointment with you, go to, a, go to the site and shot. I think we have about almost 80, 70, 90 people that have done their scans already. Um, and one of the things that you must remember, guys, petrol price is going to go up. Uh, people want to go out lesser one. So if you can send the listing to them first before they go out, you will tell them to save your time and your petrol. Here's the script to save your time in your petrol. Let me send you a 360 walkthrough of this listing first. You then now become a head of other people because you are helping a people to save money and time by showing them 360 um, Matterport shots about the listings. Then when they are interested in the listing, then they will know that, okay, I think I want to spend some time looking at this right now. So this is an opportunity to create that value for your clients via our solution called 360 plus. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Next slide. Now we have a lot of value stories that we want to share right now out there. I know a lot about growth. Now, as we move on to the second half, I'm going to work with the team to see how can we bring back certain consumers. There were a lot of uh, uh, quest questions about in the prop tech that we received that they want more touch points to reach out to consumers. So uh, Nick and us and all the team, the regional team will start looking at how can we create some of these touch points uh, to help you engage the consumers. But right now, um, this is where we are. Uh, all the value stories that we have is to help promote you and our company so that you can showcase to people that what we have achieved and what potentially you have value to add to them. Right. So with that, guys, I hope today has been very, very helpful. How many of you are learning something today? If you're learning something, please uh, say yes on the chat box. So thank you so much for, for joining us this morning. I know we are a bit over time, but I felt that today is very critical because as we enter the, six, the, the next second half of 2022, it is so vital that all of us are well equipped. Nicholas, any last words for us? No, just do it. Right. Thank you so much, guys. Signing off right now, and I'll see you next session. Thank you so much. All right. Thanks. Thanks, John. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Nick. Bye.